Well, hello, this is Mike from Music City and welcome to my channel. Uh, today, we're going to look at ranking records of 1971. Uh, been going up and down the calendar and uh, gosh, I was, how old was I in 1971? 15 years old. And really, uh, really, God, what, a, what an amazing year for music. I mean, I just can't believe the albums that I'm going to leave out of my top 10. And, and, and again, a, a lot of this has to do with style and what I like. Yeah, I'm, I'm primarily a rock guy. I don't dip too much into heavy metal or progressive rock, soul, R&B. I mean, you know, so, you know, let's get that, let's get that out of the way now. And, and there's going to be a couple you're going to give me a hard time for not including on this, but this, this was really hard and I feel really good about the choices, but let me, let me start off. You know, there's two records from 1971 that so many people just rave about and put at the top of your list. And, you know, they were not records I listened to much, uh, back in the day. They didn't get a lot of airplay on progressive radio that I listened to, which is WNEW FM in New York. I, 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 since got both of these albums, I love both of these albums. I went back and I listened to them several times prior to doing this. And, and I'm sorry, they just don't make my top 10. Uh, and again, not, not to dis disparage these albums. They're great records. And But I want to mention those two because you're going to see them a lot on like number one on a lot of people's lists. And that's Marvin Gaye's What's Going On and uh, Joni Mitchell's Blue. And uh, we're getting some reflection there. There we go. No, we'll get rid of the reflection. Um so uh, again, I love those records. Just, just they're not going to make my top ten now. Here, here's some of the other ones I considered um, uh, that I liked that year. Bad Fingers, Straight Up, got it autographed by Joey Marlin too. Uh, T Rex's first album, uh, not, not excuse me, not their first album. T Rex's Electronic Warrior. Uh, you, you know, I had Slider in the next year, which I liked a lot better. But God, it had Jeepster on there and um, the Bang a Gong. Uh, Janis Joplin's Pearl, Van Morrison's Tupelo Honey, Rod Stewart's Every Picture Tells a Story, Moody Blues' Every Boy Deserves Good Boy Deserves Favor, and Paul McCartney's Rim. Now, this is the one that people I know are going to give me a lot of hard time with. Uh, I've gone back and listened to it and really loved it. I don't know why I didn't listen to Ram a lot when the year it came out, but it, it got it. It's, it. it's a great record, but still not going to make my top ten. Now, uh... Two that you're not going to see on here, you're going to give me a hard time. I didn't pick Hunky Dory, uh, and I didn't pick Led Zeppelin IV. Um, I don't know, just a lot more Bowie that I liked a lot better than that record, although there's some fantastic songs in there. And, and again, I'm just not a not a huge uh, Zeppelin fan. So let's let's cut the garbage talk out here, and let, let's get into my top ten. And please, please show me yours, tell me yours, uh, and, and again, uh, you know, uh, recognize where I'm coming from. Now, I said I didn't like... Uh, wasn't a huge prog fan, but how can I not pick uh, for my top 10 uh, The Great Fragile by Yes? I mean, this was such a fantastic album. I even got him in the top 40 with uh, Roundabout. It's got Heart of the Sunrise on there, um, Long Distance Run Around. I, this is my go to Yes album. Really glad I got to finally got to see the band a few years ago. Uh, you know, with uh, Anderson, I saw Anderson, Wakeman, and Howe. Um, is that who I, I think that's who I saw. I, I can't remember. They've been so many incarnations, but you know, got to see the core of the band and re really enjoyed it. So my number ten is fragile uh, for yes. Now number nine, how you know this, this album is just so so darn classic, so important in terms of uh, just singer songwriter and and just giving someone the recognition that they long deserve for being one of the best writers in the business. And this is actually, I believe, this is our second solo album. And there's a first one that just really didn't make it, and I really don't know much about why that was and don't really know that album that well but uh carol king's tapestry come on what a classic record with so many uh great songs on there um you know so far away it's too late um you got a friend uh smack water jack i feel the earth move just a hey, fantastic record I, I love it love it to this day now here is a surprise my number eight and i really like this record and I think I'm going to do a great forgotten video for great forgotten records video on it separately uh and this is going to be a surprise to you but I, I I do love this record and that's uh It Ain't Easy by John Baldry or Long Bond Long John Baldry as they called him uh now you know he had a band early in the day he's sort of like with, with John Mayall you know where, where everybody who eventually became anybody worked through his bands and two of the guys that played with him in a band I believe it was called Steam Packet 
were Elton John and Rod Stewart. And that's the cool thing about this album. One side was produced by Rod Stewart and one side was produced by uh, Elton John. And it's got this fantastic song on there that you, you may know. Uh, it's got an opening rap to it called Don't Try to Lay No Boogie Woogie on the King of Rock and Roll. It, it, it's fantastic. Uh, this is just a really good album. If you don't know it, get in there and check it out. You'll you'll love it. Now, number seven has to be on here because, man, I don't think I listened to any other album uh, more so back then than I did this one. And this was sort of the first band that I really became a big fan of. And it was the first concert I ever saw in 1972 or 70, maybe it might have been 73, 72 or 3, I can't remember. I think it was 72, probably this year. Um, and, uh, it was their fourth album and it's just a great one. I, you know, I, it moved down a little bit in my list. It wasn't my number one, you know, looking back on history, but that's Jethro Tull's Aqualung. God, I mean, it's just a great record and I, and I'm a Tull fan. I really kind of fell off a little bit after the Thick as a Brick record, which was the follow-up to this, I believe, but God, Aqualung, Cross-Eyed Mary, Locomotive Breath. It's just fantastic. Ian Anderson's just, he's just great. He was such a unique talent at the time, bringing the flute into rock and roll. And what a great show to see. It was my first concert at Madison Square Garden. My first concert ever, but that's number seven. Um, number six. Um, yeah, this 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 one, uh, you know, it's funny. I think uh, I remember going to a party in high school and somebody played this record and everybody said it was the most boring party they ever want to play because it was a fantastic record, but it's maybe not the kind of record you're going to play at a party. Even though they're a party band, uh, the Beach Boys surfs up. Just a brilliant, brilliant record. I mean, just the genius of the band at this time was just was just amazing. It's a mellower record than, than you know, and having you know, than than you've than they've had in the past. Not a lot of songs about surfing and all that stuff, even though it's called Surfs Up. Uh, not a lot of car songs, I guess is what I, I should have said, but I, I love Surf's Up. What a classic record, and uh, nice to get the, the recent reissue of that with some bonus tracks and some live performances around the day, but uh, that's number six. Um, number five, and man, I know there's a lot of people who don't like this band. I'm not a huge fan of this band, but I, I, I do like their stuff, and this album I really, really liked. Got a lot of airplay, and it's something I really do like listening today. Uh, and, and and that's L.A. Woman by the Doors. Uh, man, I just love um, uh, um, the the, the long... <laughs> I'm embarrassed here. Uh, I love L.A. Woman. I love Riders on the Storm. Uh, what else is on here? I can't I can't remember. Oh gosh, just just those two uh, uh, those two songs are just just tremendous. Um, you know, really really listening to Riders on the Storm when it's raining or something. Oh man, it's just it's just really, really cool. So if you don't know that one, check that out. Now, man, we get it. Man, I'm just looking at these four records coming up and man, there's just some amazing, amazing records. And uh, number four, uh, just a masterpiece from Elton John and Bernie Taupin, Mad Man Across the Water. God, Levon, uh, Tiny Dancer, the title track. Uh, God, there's there's just not a bad song on this record. And uh, Elton at his, at his, at, at, one of his several peaks in his career. I, I love Mad Man Across the Water. Really so cool that Tiny Dancer made a big splash in the movie, Almost Famous. And I think a lot of people probably bought this album uh, as a result. Number three, man, let's go out on a limb and call this perhaps the best debut record. Well, well that, that's probably a subject in itself, but definitely one of the best debut records uh, of all time. What a great singer-songwriter. He, he, I mean, he just had a resurgence late in his career, and it's sad that we lost him to COVID, uh, you know, uh, gosh, almost, a year, almost two years ago. Uh, just one of my favorite people in the whole world that ever, ever walked this earth, uh, John Prine. What a debut record. How many classics are on here? Illegal Smile, Hello in There, Sam Stone, Paradise, Angel from Montgomery. Oh my God, what a record. And um, I just love you, John. We miss you. Uh, your family's doing a great job on carrying the flame. And there was supposed to be a tribute, some tribute concerts later this year or in a few weeks, a few months ago here in Nashville. They're going to meet reschedule to next year. Looking forward to seeing that. We miss you, John. We love you. What a fantastic record. All right, now number one and number two. Oh my gosh. I mean, you know, if we want to talk about rock bands and classic rock bands, of course, these are the two of the best bands ever. And uh, they just put out, you know, masterpieces. 
Um, and, uh, I, you know, it, it's, well, I guess it, I'm thinking I, I, I had a, I had a fix on which one I wanted, number one or number two, but number two, uh, Who's Next by The Who, and here's the deluxe edition. Oh my gosh, what a classic record. We know, we know all the songs. Bob O'Reilly, uh, uh, the song is over, I love, but won't get fooled again. It's just an amazing, amazing, amazing record. Also one of the coolest album covers ever, but number two, The Who, Who's Next. Number one, you've been waiting, keeping score, and didn't we didn't we just pick this band for uh, the number one record for 1972 or three? I'm I'm forgetting. I should have looked back. I can't remember. But gosh, what a great record! Sticky Fingers, Rolling Stones. Also, probably one of the greatest album covers ever. I got my zipper cover down there, and I keep it separated so it doesn't scratch the record next to it. But I mean, it is just fantastic. Um, I uh, also last year. Went, and I think I've got it on my, my blog, went down and visited the Muscle Shoals um, recording studio where they recorded three songs off of this record. I even got to go into the same bathroom where Keith Richards finished writing the lyrics to Wild Horses, of course. And they also they all recorded You Gotta Move and Brown Sugar there. But Brown Sugar, uh, it's got my, I think my favorite Rolling Stone song is on here, which is uh, Dead Flowers. Uh, you got Bitch. Oh, gosh. Uh, I love Moonlight Mile. What a, what a trippy, fantastic song. But yep, that's my favorite record of 1971. So hey, I hope you liked it. I'm trying to cut this and keep this short. I don't know how much more further we're going to go in the years because as I, as, I, as I guess as I get up, I stop, you know, maybe my breath of music listening kind of slowed down a little bit. And, and, and as I go down, I'm getting younger and it's more revisionist. But these were records that I did listen to back in the day and I still love today. I hope you like this video. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, please subscribe to the channel, like the video and do all that great stuff. And uh, it is that time of year. So have a happy holiday. Mike from Music City signing off. We'll see you again real soon.